Welcome to my channel Daily Bulletin News. Connie gives Gabby a scandalous idea while Spoiler may have just made themselves Connie's next target. In the Horton house, Chad leaves a message for Abby that he tucked in the kids and is headed home. When he hangs up, Thomas appears. Dad, who were you talking to? In the square, Mark talks to Abigail on the phone. She assures him Chad bought the story that she was just asking him for directions. Mark says if he hadn't, she'd be in big trouble. Felicity walks up, giving her brother a pointed look. At the pub, Kristen reads her laptop screen and exclaims, Really, Brady? As she laments how it didn't have to go this way because she had his back, Ava walks up. You sure as hell didn't have mine. Kristen can't believe she's still upset about her firing her due to Gabby's ultimatum. I said I'm sorry, I meant it. Eva isn't appeased. She's out of a job, and Gabby's probably going to come after her. Kristen suggests she should have thought about that before sleeping with Stefan. At her apartment, Connie reads a text message from Kristen. Melinda, where are you? I need you. Meanwhile, in the bedroom, Melinda wakes up to find her wrists tied to a bed. As she struggles, she sees the cardboard cutout of Lai grinning at her. What the hell are you looking at? She snipes. After texting Kristen back, Connie brings a tray of food to a screaming Melinda. Connie tells her she soundproofed the room and tries to feed her, but Melinda refuses. Connie notes the only reason she kept Melinda alive is because Lee asked her to. Melinda spits. Lie is dead, you psycho. Connie blames Melinda, Gabby, and Stefan for the way they treated him, which left him closed off to her love. She's already paid Gabby back by ruining her marriage. By the time she's through, Gabby will be left with nothing. At the Dimera mansion, Stefan finds Gabby using duct tape to divide the room. That's your half, and this is mine, she says. If she's going to take him for everything he's worth, she needs to keep the mansion as her legal residence, but she doesn't want him anywhere near her. And if he brings his girlfriend home, make sure she stays on your half. She leaves to divide up the rest of the house. EJ enters, glibly remarking on Gabby's redecorating. Stefan blames his brother since he convinced her not to move out. Now, she's determined to take him for everything he's worth, including the house. E.J. points out that the house is half his, so his beloved will be in for a rude awakening should she try it. They trade barbs, with E.J. getting in digs about Stefan sleeping with Ava, of all people. Stefan orders E.J. to keep her out of it. E.J. gravely reminds Stefan that Ava almost killed his mother. He then chuckles, wishing him luck. He's going to need it. When Mark disconnects his call with Abigail, Felicity asks who is in big trouble. Mark says he was talking to Aaron, who lied about lacrosse camp. She asks if he really had to punish him. They all have rules to follow, he says, which he makes because it's what their parents wanted. Felicity asks who punishes him when he lies. He quips she can ask when she catches him in one. Felicity wishes their parents didn't die in the accident. Mark does too, but promises he's not going anywhere. As they hug, Mark solemnly looks off. As Ava and Kristen bicker in the pub, Kristen sees a text message from Melinda, which says she needs a break. Kristen angrily texts her back. Connie responds, as Melinda, that she doesn't want to take orders from the woman who murdered her daughter. She can take her job and shove it. Kristen's confused since they hashed all that out before she hired Melinda. Ava is just as surprised because Melinda always put the company first, especially when it came to. She abruptly stops talking and flashes back to Melinda telling her Connie is a fraud. Kristen asks what she's referring to. Ava grins. That's a Demera problem and she does not work there anymore. In the bedroom, Melinda tries to appeal to Connie's humanity. A dismissive Connie leaves her alone with cardboard lie. Gabby comes to Abigail's room in the mansion to introduce herself. She also explains the duct tape she'll be seeing around the mansion. Abigail is sorry to hear about her marital troubles. Surprised to hear that, Gabby explains their friends to enemies to frenemies journey. Was it about me sleeping with your husband? Abigail asks. Gabby says it wasn't. That happened before she and Stefan got together, but also, Abigail has did so. She couldn't consent since Stefan slept with her altar. Technically, it was rape, Gabby says, wondering if she could use it in her divorce case. They agree they could both use all the frenemies they can get before Gabby continues her work on dividing up the house.